Do they show up? But if I were to like, if I were to abbreviate the whole class in a cliff note version, it's so simple. The cliff note version of the whole class, like for people with no attention span, is you have your larval plants that the caterpillars eat, and then you have the nectar plants that the butterflies, you know, eat, and then maybe a little water, and that's it. Like, it, it, that would be, Tell so. Tell about, like, can you, you can propagate all types of milky. And then the new a roosting. So butterflies like to roost. Like, chickens go up in a tree at night, and they feel safe. Well, butterflies, and I have videos, they like to find dried out sticks underneath a tree, and they'll cling to it and form little colonies, and they all hang out together. That's so cool. Oh, really and, it, cool. and it's really brilliant because the predators, you know, if they try to go after those roosting butterflies, those sticks are so delicate that literally it could just fall apart. Oh. You know? Yeah. Like, as it's approaching, like, oh, and they're way out on a limb, you know, like, so that. Anyways, um, so here in South Florida, the easiest butterfly to attract or have in your garden at all times is the one you'll see all over the place here. It's called the zebra long wing, and it has yellow and black stripes. And it has like a nice little strobe flutter effect as it goes around. And there's a plant that uh, grows naturally here. I was doing the same thing, a swallowtail. Okay, so the swallowtail, and um, I actually do landscape maintenance for Mary Benton with uh, Bound by Beauty, which is in Miami Shores. And she's like a butterfly extremist, like in a good way. Like, she already has a count, like how many species of butterflies visited her garden, and it's like 35. And, uh, and the moment I ask her about a particular plant, she just gets all like way into it. And her husband's like, Mary, Mary, come on. We have an appointment to get her second COVID vaccine and we gotta go. And that was true. And I was getting her garden ready for a, a talk that she was giving. And the swallowtail butterfly, there's the big one called the giant swallowtail, very yellow. It's one of the largest butterflies you see flying around, and it has two black stripes. That one, the larva looks like bird poop, and it looks like a blob of fresh, hot You're bird. Kidding. No, and it's mimicry because a bird doesn't want to eat its own poop. Oh my God! Right? Wow. And then, uh, but it's a it's a tasty caterpillar munching away on. Wild lime. So the tree that I asked her about, that's in the corner of her garden, it's called wild lime, and it starts with a X or a Z. A dance. It's a big long name. And we're gonna start growing a lot of them. I brought cuttings home where that mist house we root. The, so we're gonna start propagating and selling like all the butterfly larval plants. But this one, Jatropha, anybody can fit this in your yard because it's a tiny little tree. Like, there's a huge one over there. Like, I never pruned it in umpteen years. That's about as big as it gets. The trunk, there's some by the, the shop over there where the musicians are. They're narrow trunk every single day of the year. So the butterflies, are they get their nectar. But they say the zebra long wing is actually a pollen feeder, where they actually collect the pollen grain those rather than drink the nectar. So the wild lime or any citrus, which citrus is really difficult to grow here, the, that's what their caterpillars feed on. But there's a Annie swallowtail. And if you grow like parsley or dill, you might find this caterpillar that looks like a monarch butterfly caterpillar where they have all the stripes and it's all pudgy, super stripey. That is the Annie Swallowtail. Now there's another vine I have over there, like 10 steps away. It makes this giant flower called the Dutchman's Pipe. 
and it's an Aristolochia. So the Aristolochia vine is for the, I think, black swallowtail or another type of swallowtail. Polydamon. Now there's a prehistoric plant called Kunti. Zamia Kumala. And it looks like a little fern plant. But it has like, there's a cycad right there. Or Dijun spinulosum. Well, this one is a mini version. These are prehistoric plants that lived on Earth when the dinosaurs were around. Because they, you know, they do uh, copper-like fossil studies, and they find that the dinosaurs were eating cycads. Because it's in the, the copper light. So, the, zam the Zamia Pula, nice little plant, is for the Atala butterfly. And I have a video of an Atala, and it's like the most magical thing, because it's like a black and red butterfly, and it flies around. You hear like butterfly whiz over there or something? It has these little like flags, like red, that flashes as it's fluttering. It's amazing. So, Do they, they come from this plant? No, the, you have to have the kunti. Because they won't touch that one. But. Oh, wow. It's just in the way you're doing it in my yard. Just by putting the plant, they'll come. Basically, yeah. they, the mother smells it, knows to lay her eggs on it. Yeah. Which is like what I learned, like, well, butterflies, like salmon swimming upstream. Mm -hmm. They will find a way up the same stream to lay their eggs. Like, it's amazing. Yeah. So what we learned was you can't just grab a caterpillar off a bush and put it on the same species bush in a butterfly garden because I thought I would seed yeah. the butterfly garden I created in Dania by just grabbing caterpillars and putting them on the larval food plant. They don't want to eat because, like, the mother didn't lay her eggs on that plant or something. Oh, it's wow. so complex. That's so yeah. Isn't it what we just saying? Yeah, the same, it's like if, if you went to, uh, you know, Texas Day Brazil and, and get the vegetarian just eat the salad bar, and then you went to like sweet tomatoes, and you couldn't eat any of the salad, it's the same salad, right? But maybe Cisco brought that salad, or maybe uh, my strain from the pocket. Anyways, there's other uh, plants, like this one that... I learned about, and I was, as a landscaper, I thought it was a weed, and it's just, it's just, the, basically, almost like a crow. somebody painted, they did the sidewalk chalk before one of her, one of her lessons, her talks, yeah. and pellitory, so this is Florida pellitory, and when you eat it, It has all kinds of medicinal value and tastes like cucumber. Oh, wow. You can snip it and put it in your salad. But this is a, a food source of the Admiral butterfly. Oh. And then... Is that the blue one? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I don't even... You know what it looks like. Oh, the, uh, they're smaller. And here's the easy one. Okay. The easy, easy, easy one. Milkweed. So Angela, like, fostered, how would you say, you reared? Um, uh, yeah, I reared. But do you make the carnation? Uh, I raised monarchs, only started in September, but I, oh. as of yesterday, I released my number 128. Oh. Oh. Yeah, and, uh, oh my God. It's, it's, you know, it's ups and downs because I've had matches that get sick, yeah. and you have to take good care of the milkweed. It's, it's actually particular, that milkweed. Yeah, how, how, how do you propagate? Uh, well, I've had mine in a patio. Out. Yeah, and there's actually a giant milkweed. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so cool. And it's huge. So yeah, you get so you can me. raise a lot yeah. of butterflies on a <laughs> giant milkweed. Tried that yet. It's got I big silvery know. leaves and white yeah. oh, awesome. beautiful white oh, lavender flowers. How do you propagate this thing? Okay, awesome. Uh, cutting, like you take cuttings and you dip them in the rooting hormone, and then you put them in like a sheltered place. Like I have a mist house, so it's super easy. 
after the, the mist comes on and keeps the, the body from drying out until the roots develop. So, I don't have a yard because I'm in a townhouse, but I, I've been sneaking and planting outside my... I think that's pretty much the whole rundown. Like, it's... If you don't, like, basically, back to the simple fact, you got to have plants in your garden for the caterpillars. And then the nectar, any, any kind of, like, flowery plants that bees and everything go to, they get their nectar. And then the roosting spot. And then the other thing is just put the plants scattered about. So, oh, wait, let's not forget the sulfur butterfly. The little yellow one. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, they're so easy too. You just have different cassia. Any kind of cassia. Cassia fake ariana, you see that one over there? Yeah. With the pink flowers coming out? Yeah. And there's little uh, ba Baja Men uh, Cassia Baja Mensis, Chapmanii. And there's uh, the Cassia candlestick cassia. Grows like a weed. So you basically have cassia. And then you have the yellow butterfly. Done. Done deal. It's like super easy. I bet it is about And then you encourage your neighbors to plant more. Yeah. You know, <laughs> spread the word. Just it's funny with the, the plants that I have because I'm in a patio. I've had the monarchs. You were talking about how they want to lay the eggs and they smell it. They were trying to fit in, but tapping themselves on the tree. Oh, oh. Coming from the top, coming from the bottom. They want to come in and lay eggs, oh. but I, I already had like 80 caterpillars. And I'm like, I can't, I can't do any more. That's yeah, really yeah. Like the female, the female the red, like the monarch. The big red no, one, like the monarch. Smell it. It's it's coming, but I can't let them in. There goes the sulfur. See it? Is that a yellow one? Did you see the sulfur? Oh, I missed it. And the remarkable thing that you should pay attention to that when I like did a contemplative, we have a tree called sorrowless tree. And it's highly revered in Southeast Asia because they say if you sit beneath it, when you get up and leave, you leave sorrowless. So Stacy thought it was a great place in the morning on a Saturday afternoon morning, you know, late afternoon Valentine's Day and put two chairs and we sat under the sorrowless tree and it was visited by green hover bees, uh, honey bees, every butterfly we talked about including a big swallow tail and I'm like well there it is that's why they call it a sorrowless tree because that's their seeing sorrowless. Oh sorrowless I love that. Because when you get that. up and leave you leave sorrowless. Yeah. You have no sorrow yeah, in you yeah. after that experience yeah. and uh it has beautiful leaves and the flowers are giant clusters of little flowers. Are you gonna walk by that tree? There was something more to the story that I forgot. Uh, <laughs> some reason about the star of the tree. That it brought in a lot of different. You lost all your flowers. Yeah, I lost my train of thought and everything. It's called. Uh, While you were at work with Disney, I was down at Amy's Memorial Pool. Yeah, you sit down there with all your daily angst. Well, no, it's like you do it in the morning. It's not like it. No, wait. At night, we, we went back and there were tree frogs lined up. I think oh. that's why I saw those. There's probably night visitors to the flowers. Now, you know, my next class will be like, you know, winning with moths. And moths are nocturnal pollinators, most of them. So you have, and the flowers that are pollinated by moths are like, I don't know, evolutionarily uh, challenging. Like, what are they trying to achieve? Like, the moth grows a bigger tongue that can reach into the deeper flower, and then the flowers just get harder to pollinate. Like, why would nature do that? But it's true, because most small pollinated flowers are incredibly long and deep. Do you know the answer? No, no, I, I'm sorry. I just, I just want to ask the question. Okay, uh, okay. no. You know, um, are, 
are lost and butterflies picking up their bees maybe dropping off because of the population generation? Um, I really think they just all coexist happily. Like oh, Stacy even yeah. said, why doesn't the bees sting the butterflies? Oh, we do have but that get both. There's so the many and it's kind of rude to think that, you know, rabbits are so, like, procreating so efficiently, and they're, like, on the bottom of the food chain, like sardines, and caterpillars, and grubs. So, basically, look, here we go. Keep it long, way. So, basically, we have, like, woodpeckers that feed exclusively on grubs that are in dead trees and stuff. And they can hear the grub like munching away and wow. then they poke right through to get the grub. So like grubs are but you know, bees and we had a beehive in a, in a dead tree next to my house and then the, the tree was about to fall. It was even moving a little and it was a beehive, so I got a bee guy here and it had one of those boom lifts and the guy gets up in short flip flops <laughs> and a tank top. <laughs> And a boom lift takes like a minute to get to where you gotta go. So if he got ransacked by the bees, it would take him a minute, like, to get, I'd be, most people would be dead. And guess what? I have videos that he took from up there, and he's like, hey y'all, beer in the sand. That's the hard rock. What are you doing? It's Friday. Oh but guess what, y'all, the bees. Are okay, and that's his video. I can play it back, and and I'm watching them, and a bee comes all the way down and stings me on my eyebrow, and my face blows up. He went, he was, it was all blown up, man. Oh my god. What? What were you thinking right there? You got paid that, right? Yeah. Like, come on. So, and I'm I'm helping the bees. I'm I didn't want to kill them to cut the tree down. It could so, be the kiss. So he took the whole hive, the queen and all her colony. Uh -huh. Like he brought used a, a a thing to make them all come out, and then a pheromone and like to keep them congealed together in a pack, mm -hmm. and then he like gently. Just shot back them all up. Wow. Like it looked like a carpet disappearing off the trunk. And then he let me hold the shot bag, and I'm like, that's like, like 10 pounds of angry bees, like, you know, like. And and he actually even told me, I sh shouldn't have this on video, but. But the guy is like, he goes, you know. I like to, you know, maybe drink and drive, but if I get pulled over and he like pats me, because he doesn't get, get this, and he can open that thing up and like let them all out and like, but they don't bother the guy. It's so bizarre, like, like that kind of. So now we. Uh, they have an understanding. It's weird. <laughs> maybe he's an old beekeeper. He is a beekeeper. Oh, yeah. He's gonna take the hive from here, yeah. establish it in a box, and it has to be more than uh, like eight miles from my house. Because they'll all go back. <laughs> oh my they God. know you. So you know, he has to take them like wow. eight miles away and get them established into a box. And once they're comfortable in the box where the queen is, they will go out and get their pollen and nectar and go back and, and stay in the box. And then they get to travel because the USA, we have the best almond fields in the world. Oh. Almonds are from, from, from like China, but they grow so well in California that we outproduce China in almonds. Wow. But in order to get a high yield on your crop, you need honeybees. So beekeepers will get all their bees here in Florida yeah. and Kansas and Maine and everywhere. Because if you want to make money, you get your beehives and you send them to California and the, the grove owners will pay you per box to pollinate their orchard. Almond orchards. Yes. Wow. Bees from all over the whole United States. Go. It's cool and it's scary because, it is scary, you know, COVID, mass. It's like drinking out of the same water fountain. Every person in the USA, they're all like drinking out of that same water fountain. So they, yeah, like there's varroa mites, there's trach mites, 
there's uh, stuff that bees get uh, that that they can get from this big festival, almond grove pollinating festival, you know? Pretty crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. Anyway, I think that's enough. Uh, I'll save a little for the orchid class. Yeah. Butterfly like a boss.